So this tutorial by Squarespace Toots is on how to add jQuery to your Squarespace site um, and how to use it a little bit on your site. Uh, jQuery is something there's a lot of uh, Squarespace answers and um, Google tutorials that will give you ideas on how to do this, but I'm going to take you through step by step exactly how to do it and how to do it where you get the least amount of conflicts and errors. Um, so you want to go into your site and in your dashboard you'll go to settings and um, go to advanced and code injection. So what code injection does is it puts this whatever code you put in here in either the header, the footer, or the log page. Um, if you have a store you can do custom order confirmations and things like that but we're worried about the header so whatever we put in here it's going to be on the header of every single page of your site if you're wondering what the header is um, the header is not the area that has your site title and your navigation even though that is header header ID your header comes before your body and I'm sorry I'm saying header when I should be saying head um, I just always think of it as the header your head is what defines all of the fancy stuff that controls your site as far as styling and script and everything goes before you get to the body which is your actual content so if you're gonna add a custom style sheet um, or a jQuery plugin or things like that you would want to call it in the head right here and we do that through code injection. So this will be paged on every single page. And in order to first initiate, initiate the jQuery library, you're going to want to paste this. Um, so Squarespace um, colon script space src equals plugin js in quotation marks combo equals true in quotation marks forward slash caret. Um, same thing only with site.js and then you want to call the Google Ajax library for jQuery and whatever version you want um, I recommend using generally the version below the most recent one because sometimes if you're using plugins and things like that it won't support the most recent one so that's just something that I like to do but pretty much any as long as you're calling the, the Ajax library, you should be good, and you're going to want the jQuery mid.js. The nice thing about doing is it here, doing it here is it's a lot more difficult to add the library through adding it as a JS file, um, which you could do by creating a whole page on your site that's a JS file, or uploading it as a file on a page and then trying to link to it or uploading it as a file through your custom design CSS area and trying to link to it. If you just use the Google library that's already online, script to it right here, you are now fully jQuery functional as soon as you hit save. Also have the least amount of errors, so things like your parallax scrolling effects and all of the cool script stuff that Squarespace does so well there will be a lot less errors. In fact, I haven't, I've yet to find a conflict or an error with the code that I do um, based off their base code. So now how do you actually use it once it's on there? Um, you can come to any page, like we'll do our story, and edit the page. Oh, I gotta create it since it's demo content right now. So I'll edit the page, and you can do this pretty much anywhere, but I tend to tend to put them all at the bottom. Um, you want to put in a code block and get rid of the hello world. I keep it on HTML because that's what I'm used to working with. You can turn it into a JavaScript block, a CSS block, whatever you want to do, but I just keep it HTML and then whatever script I want to do. So let's do, um, let's see, we'll steal something from here real quick. Or actually, I'll show you on this page kind of what I'm doing or 
how this might work. Um, so, oh, dancing on it. So on this one, we've got this map, which if we come over here and look at it, So this is a client of mine, and this is a custom map that we load that's got different places that she has danced in 2015 and 14. So when I click on these, basically I'm switching out one set of images for another using JavaScript. This animation is also coming up through JavaScript. Um, if I click on one of these, I'm going to a page that has an error, but... Um, oh, that's because we haven't posted that blog post yet. But if I click on one of these, I go to her post from New York because her dancer was on New York. Also done through custom code, um, although that was not JavaScript. So in order to do this, we're going to need the inspector open, and we're going to need a code block on the page itself. So we've got code block, and it turns into embedded scripts, which notice that this does not show up on this page at all. It doesn't even take up any height um, because it's embedded script so it automatically hides it so you can put them pretty much anywhere. But script, when the document's ready and we click on something we can show, hide stuff, remove stuff, whatever. We're just gonna click that one real quick and we're basically gonna say when we click on Lear Miller Let's get rid of the title. So I always do doc ready. Uh, what that does, if you're not super familiar with jQuery, is that's after the document, the entire page is loaded. Then you can do this. If you try and click on it before the page is loaded um, or before it's ready, it won't work. So here's where your inspector comes in handy or doing some custom CSS would come in handy. Oops. So we got to figure out what link this is in order to make a right call to it. So we've got an A tag hidden in this block. I'm not going to get any more specific than that right now. But So ID of the block, which is this one, and we want to enclose this in that in um, quotation marks. So any anchor tag in this block, when we click on it, we'll hide the header of the same block. Do that. H1. We don't want to add class. And then we just make sure that, of course, we have curly bracket, parentheses, semicolon, um, because we are closing this bracket, and we are closing this parentheses, and a semicolon after the entire function. So just note to make sure that we, oh, and I actually need two of those because I've got the one for the click function as well. Okay, so I'm closing this function here, that parentheses there, tossing a semicolon after the trigger. Same thing here after ready, we've got the semicolon, we've got the parentheses, we've got that. These are the most important things because they're the things that will screw you up the most when it comes to scripting. So save, save. Oh, and that did not get embedded. So notice that it's a code block, it's not embedded because display source was on. So we do not want to display the source because that's going to just say treat this as regular text rather than treat it as code. So if it doesn't look like this after you've saved, you've done something wrong and it's probably that. So save, save, come over here, refresh. 
And now when we click on Lear Miller, it should hide the title of that. Yes, it did. But it also went, of course, to the anchor link. So we have to go back here to see it. But that's basically how you do um, simple jQuery scripts in a Squarespace site. Um, doing a plugin is a little more difficult. You would have to upload the plugin as a custom file, which manage custom files in your custom CSS editor. So if I had a plugin, I would let's get this so we can see this. We would upload it, whatever it was, and I will have a different tutorial soon on how to do this, but we'd upload that plugin, get the ID of it or the, the path to it. Then we would come back and call the plug or insert the plugin in the header area of whatever page we're on, which would be gear, advanced, get to the header for just this page. We would not do it in the advanced code injection that we do there because we just want the plugin on this page, unless you wanted it on every page. But then we would call to that here, and then we would trigger it in a code block here. Would be basically how you do use a plugin, but this is how you use regular jQuery in your site.